Hey guys, I have a very special treat for you today. We are bringing back the Apple Motion Behaviors Challenge. If you've never seen me do this, I bring on a really cool guest and we go head to head making animations in Apple Motion. And today I have somebody very special from very far away. You guys, Ian Anderson. Everybody say hi to Ian. How are you, Ian? Hey, great, thanks, Jen. Hope you're doing well. This is gonna be really good fun. I can't wait. If you guys don't know Ian Anderson, he is a developer of plugins for Final Cut Pro. You can pick up some of his most popular plugins on FX Factory. He also literally wrote the book on Final Cut Pro. And I know Ian, you've got a new edition of that coming out pretty soon. Hold it up so everyone can see. So yeah, this is out now. There will be an update for 10.7, but you know, there weren't huge amounts of changes and uh, everyone who buys this book in physical or electronic versions gets a free electronic update whenever we make updates, just like Final Cut itself. So it should stay up to date. You know, it's so funny because I've had people ask me like, would you ever write a book? And I was like, I'm like, no, <laughs> it just sounds like really hard and definitely not my forte. So if you are interested in learning Final Cut from a book, because I know some people really would prefer to have like a physical book that they can kind of thumb through. Ian's book is definitely the way to go. So if you guys haven't seen the challenge before, this is how it works. I'm going to draw two random Apple motion behaviors that Ian and I each have to use in our own projects. We're also going to be working on the same type of project, which I draw at random too. The options are logo animation, where we get to pick any logo and animate it in motion, text animation, looping background, or wildcard, which means we get to make anything we want. We're each going to have two hours to get our projects done, and then we're going to meet back here and reveal our results to each other and to you. I like to say this isn't a competition, by the way. It's an exposition of two creatives. So it's not really like, like we're trying to compete against each other. We're really just trying to compete against our, ourselves and our own creativity. But, but Ian is a motion master. So I'm a little intimidated, but I'm just going to do this and have fun. No way. Look, it's going to be a heap of fun. I, I, I hope we don't get wild card and I want some cool simulations coming out of that. I want, I don't know, re well, repels, great, wind, um, gravity, orbit, anything like that would be good. The framing behavior, please, the framing behavior would be lovely. They're all in there. All right, let's do it. This is the moment of truth. So let's pick the two behaviors first. They're all in here. I'm going to shake it up really good and I'm not going to look. The first one, oh, Link. Oh boy. And the second one, <laughs> Oscillate. Link and Oscillate are two behaviors. Okay. Now you can use other behaviors, but you have to use these two. The link behavior links one parameter to another. A lot of title templates are built with the link parameter. And the other one is Oscillate, which cycles a parameter between two different values. And then okay. let's see what kind of project we're going to do. It looks like a lot of different categories in here, but it's the same four over and over just to make it kind of more challenging. Oh boy. Text animation. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> oh no, I'm in trouble. When Ian's it's excited, I'm in trouble. <laughs> it will be fun. So we're going to see each other in a couple hours, but for you guys, just stay tuned for two seconds and you get to see what we've been working on. Are you ready, Ian? Sounds like fun. Let's do it. All right. Fingers crossed. I'll see you guys in two hours. <gasps> two hours later. All right. It's been a couple hours. Ian and I are back and we're about to reveal our final results to each other and to you. Ian, how did it go for you? Yeah, it was good. I really enjoy using behaviors. I really do like the oscillate behavior and link is just kind of bedrock. Um, when you're building a lot of templates, like I've been doing a bit recently, you, you really need to know how the link behavior works to hook the on-screen controls from one filter so people can control elements when they're using templates. So yeah, this is fun and I love playing with text. So yeah, good job. Good. I felt a lot of pressure. I feel like I had a lot of ideas, but I really just wanted to make something I liked at the end of the day. So for me, that was kind of, I think, the biggest challenge. Um, but I did have fun with it and I did end up with something I like, though I have a feeling yours is going to be more elaborate. So I'm a little nervous. You guys, by the way, 
I always say this isn't a competition. It's an exposition. Be nice in the comments. You guys always are. But just in case there's somebody out there looking to be mean, don't do it. I'm I am quite sure your stuff is very, very good, Jane. I mean, you've made courses on motion. I've made courses on motion. Mark's made courses on motion. Nick's made a course on motion. We all know motion. So we're all friendly and happy here. It's it's, it's all good. Uh, we'll see. All right. I'm going to let you do the honors of going first <laughs> since you're the guest. So why don't you pull okay, up your magic okay. and let's see what you did. All right. So I've got this uh, very exciting name of text with oscillate and link because we had to. that's what we had to do. So I'll just play it through once and then tell you what I did. I love that. So I started out with the word think uh, with a period. Then I duplicated it and removed the period from one, removed the think from the other one, moved it over so it was in the right place. And then I got into oscillating. So there's my period. Let's turn the light off. And just so we can see it, I'm going to flick the environment back on. Now, this is 3D text because 3D text gives you fun with lights. So we've got this thing, which is just a period bouncing. And you can see there underneath how it's bouncing. Now, also because I've got motion blur on here, which has a couple of interesting consequences, but the oscillate behavior, this one here, is a parameter behavior. So to set up something like this, you go to properties, you find the property you want to add the behavior to, you right click, add parameter behavior, and then oscillate. Now, what this will do is it will bounce like a sine wave. So things go up and down, but it's got a happy little checkbox here, half range. So instead of bouncing all the way through a center line like this, it goes boing, 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 stuff like that. So that's what's good for that but you need to decrease the amplitude over time to make it stop bouncing. And I did that by right clicking amplitude and adding a ramp behavior. Um, I know Mark likes rate. I like ramp. I'm sure there's benefits to both. So I'm starting at zero and going to negative 800. And so that's how we get this bouncing ball. Now it's not perfect. I probably would want a keyframe to get this absolutely perfect, but I think it was pretty cool. Now, after that, I added a light and I've linked, yay for link, the position of the light to the position of the falling period, which is bouncing with the oscillate. So I took the period and I right click. Anyway, you get the idea. Link behavior is super awesome. So what did I do? I took the light, I right clicked on the Y or maybe even all the position elements I think I did and also linked all of those to the period. So everything is then bounce, uh, linked to the same thing. At this point, I can turn off the environment so it is purely lit from the light. Now, I did keyframe the color of the light and I timed that with the bounces. I put in some markers where the bounce happens and change the color. Uh, now, this is the only downside of motion blur is that the color change is not instant. So I get that little frame there between the two, which is kind of not what I want. I wanted an instant change, but motion blur is all or nothing, so I have to do it this way. Uh, now we've got some text. Now, if I have the text here, then that light is now illuminating all of that text as well. And you could go with this. If you've got a, a really restrictive brand manager, then this is fine. You could do something like this, but that's really fun, but I had to take it a bit further because you've got to show what you're doing. So I, I did a link of the position in X so that it, it's moving in X as the ball or the period is bouncing in Y. And that looks pretty cool, but you can also link the rotation so that it's kind of whacking itself in the head there to get into position. And then I added a background element. Now the background element is actually just a rectangle and it's linked as well. I linked the position in Z or Z, so it comes closer as the ball bounces, which is why you can see it more when it lands. And it's got obviously the same light shining on it. And I've also linked the color. This doesn't do a whole lot, but it just adds a little bit of a change. And I've used the offsets to make it a darker version of the color. And you can see over here, there's a little change there with that. It's not a back, not a big change. But there we go.
Ian, I love it. It's so cool. I love the shading and the use of the light. I love the coordination and the sync between the bounce of the ball and the light and the colors. It all just feels so cohesive and like just really well thought out. So I love this a lot. I think this is excellent. Bex, look, it's it's fun. Sometimes, yeah. It's, it's got to be simple, but look like there's depth in there. And I think you get that by trying things out, uh, finding things that don't work and then not using them at all. So <laughs> then you're left with only the things that work the best and it can work out. It looks so good. All right. I think I'm a little nervous to show you mine, but I just got to do it. Are you ready? Okay, Jen, I'm really keen to see what you've done. Please, please share. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to turn off the title background. I published this as a title template. So I'll just hit play and show you. So I basically replicated the text and I have it build in and build out. So I started by building just one piece of text here. Let me solo it so you can see. And I first started with this text and I keyframed it on the Y value. And then I grouped that text and added a rectangle mask. So the text comes up from behind the mask. And then I linked the uh, width of the rectangle mask to the width of this text. So if I added more characters, the width of the mask would follow along with it. Then I duplicated that text three times and I changed the weight of the text on the uh, couple of the other elements. And I linked the content of the original text to the content of my duplicates. So if I change the original text, then they all change as well. That's really cool. That's very useful. That's, um, yeah, linking text contents is a great trick. Yes, but then I had the challenge, and this is the part where I said that I learned something new with the link behavior. I was like, how am I gonna push down all of this other text when I'm adding more length. So I linked the X position to the right edge of the text. So that's how I got that to work. Then I grouped all that stuff and I replicated it and I turned it on its axis and I used the rate behavior on the tile offset to get this drift instead of ramp, I used rate. And then the oscillate for me was kind of a challenge because I just couldn't think of like what I wanted to do that didn't just feel so back and forth. So I did something I've never done before, which is what's so great about these challenges is that on the replicator cell, I changed the color mode to over pattern and then grabbed this blue color tag and applied an oscillate behavior to it. So you can see that color tag bouncing back and forth inside the gradient so the colors kind of just drift over time. Yeah, that's great. There's, there's, it's one of the best things about challenges like this is you get to explore things that you haven't quite thought of before. You get pushed into a new direction. And yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So I don't know. I was excited to like find a couple new things today that I hadn't really done before. And then I just, um, like I said, I have a title background that I rigged a blur effect to it. And I just published some of the parameters to Final Cut. So this is what it looks like in Final Cut as a published parameter. And I published the colors so I could like change this color to better match let's say the, the image underneath. And then I also rigged the background blur. So it, you know, by default starts out clear and then gets blurrier, but I can really pump up the blur in the background too, if I wanted to. And I, you know, I did the build in, build out thing. Um, and if you change the text, you can play with the horizontal spacing as well. So that's what I did. That's awesome. Are you thinking of getting into making more motion templates? Jen? I, you know, as we discussed, honestly, I just don't have the patience. I get excited about one idea for this, but to like sell <laughs> motion templates and make like 10 of them, I just, I don't have the focus, frankly. So thank goodness for people <laughs> like you who are out there doing this, but you know, this is like one element, but maybe, you know, I give away, I have a Patreon community and uh, I put all of my working files for motion on that accessible to the patrons in my community. So if anyone wants, you know, this particular title template, they can grab that one. But I, I don't see myself making a whole series. That's really cool though. That's great. Thank you. 
Well, this was real fun and I am dying to hear everyone's comments down below. If you guys are interested in me doing like a full step-by-step -step tutorial about how I made this template, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do that for you. Ian also has a YouTube channel. Ian, do you still post to YouTube occasionally? You do, right? I, I, I sometimes do. I mean, I've, I've been too busy doing, you know, stuff in Blender for clients to launch board games to do much with YouTube, but I should post more often. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to see maybe a full tutorial on Ian's project, let us know down in the comments. Ian, I'll let you know what the verdict is. If there's a lot of interest, maybe it's worth doing just for fun when you have yeah. spare time. I know you're very, very busy. <laughs> Absolutely. Sounds like fun. Cool. Well, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to put all of Ian's contact information down in the description. Ian is um, available to work on your projects for you if you need them. So um, I'll link to his contact information down below. Um, also, don't forget, Ian has written the book on Final Cut Pro. So if you're interested in that, I'll put that information down below as well. And look for Fun With Stuff on FX Factory, because those are all of Ian's plugins, right, Ian? That's me, fun with stuff. Cool, all right. Well, I just thank you for doing this with me. Thank you to all of you for watching. Um, Ian, I can't wait to see you again at the next Final Cut Creative Summit. Indeed, thanks so much, Jen. That was terrific fun. And yeah, I look forward to catching up again, hopefully again later this year. That sounds good. All right, thanks, bye everybody.